So I am back with the Go XLR. This is technically my fourth video. Number four, because I did a live stream about this, unboxed it, played around with it. I did another video where I showed you how you can connect this to other audio interfaces and how you can connect USB mics such as the Blue Yeti via the 3.5mm input. And I did another video showing you how you can use the faders and uh, the mixers you can apply different effects to make your voice sound deep. So you can change your voice like that and it, you've got different things you can beep and play samples. Go! Different things like that. So check out that video if you want an understanding as to what this can do. Just, you know, the basics of how this works and how you would actually use it. But I want to give you my final thoughts on this. Tell you what I like and tell you what I don't like. But I will say off the bat... I have decided to send this back and the main reason is that there's a few things that don't really work for me but ultimately it comes down to the fact that this doesn't really complement the existing equipment that I've got and I don't think it improves my recording setup. Now part of the reason is that I love the sampler, I love the mixer and I love all those special effects but I'm also realistic uh, about the fact that I'm not going to use those things a lot. I'm a 40 year old guy. You know, I'm not going to be putting on funny voices all the time. It's not my style, if I'm honest. One of the reasons I used this, uh, one of the reasons I bought this was the fader uh, and the compressor. Um, the compressor works quite well, actually, and, and the faders work okay as well. But there's a few other things that I don't like. Um, so I'll talk about that first, right? So right off the bat, I'll talk about the mic, the, the, the mic preamps. Now, everyone lauds these, uh, you know, says that these have fantastic preamps. Now, the preamps are okay but they're not as good as people are making out. This has got 70 decibels of gain, but if I jump over to my overhead camera, you can see I've got a few different audio interfaces. This one does 43 decibels of gain. This does 75. This does 70. This does 60. But the, the actual decibels that you can get from an audio interface, it doesn't always tell you the full story. It doesn't tell you the full story because at, you know, this one providing 60 decibels, I get better mic quality from this audio interface than I do from this. Now, I can get them sounding pretty much the same because I can use the compressor and all that through this, so it's maybe a mute point. But saying that this has got 70 decibels of gain, you know, it is technically true, but again, it doesn't tell you the full story. I don't think the, the mic preamps, the preamps in here are as good as, you know, similar solutions on the market. That audio interface over there as well. It's about the same price as the Go XLR, but that only provides 60 decibels of, of gain from the mic preamps, but the mic preamps are better. And this one has 70, so... But it's one of those things, I'm not trying to criticise the, the Go XLR too much about that, because this isn't just an audio interface, it's a mixer, it's a sampler, it does so many different things, so... You know, it's not a fair comparison in that regard, but... The mic preamps aren't as good as I thought they would be, but they're not bad. They're certainly not bad, uh, and you're listening to them right now. One thing that I don't like is that it only has one XLR input at the back. It's not a deal breaker, but if this had two or three or four XLR inputs, this would have been such a you know it would have been such a flexible device. It would have been so much more useful. They've they've got a few workarounds though, and I showed you that in the other video. You can use a 3.5 millimeter mic and. You can actually connect another audio interface into this. And I, I did that in that other video. I, I was showing you me using my boom mic into the audio, a uh, Audient ID22, into the Zoom FE, into this. So you could technically have like 12 or 14 mics running through all these devices into the Go XLR. So you can technically have additional mics in this, but you have to run it through the mic input. So... It's kind of a workaround, but I would have liked to have seen two XLR inputs at a minimum on this. I think for the size of the device as well. I mean, look at the size of the device. This, look at this thing. I know it's a different thing again, but this is a tiny little thing. It's got two. Look at the size of this. This has got eight. So, again, very different devices. These are dedicated audio recorders, audio interfaces. But for the size of this thing, they really should have put in two preamps. They should have put in two XLR inputs. So, yeah. Not a major criticism per se, it's just, it's annoying that they didn't have two XLR inputs. That's something that would have really helped me. Um, another thing that I don't like about it is the, the headphone amps. Now, 
you, you maybe kind of see that just now, but I've got the headphone apps nearly at 100%, uh, nearly at 100% there, right? So that is something I've noticed I have to do because the headphone amp in this is, it's okay, it's, it's not amazing though. For reference, when I was playing about with my audio levels the other day, when I did the video about the, you know, connections at the back, I found that, you know, I've maybe got the audio level on that audio, uh, the Audient ID 22, the one with 60 decibels of gain. Maybe I have my mic level at 60 to 70 percent or so, something like that, 75. This has to be at 100 and the zoom was like at 50 percent or something like that. Now, you can use things like this. This is a headphone preamp, relatively cheap, you know, like 50, 60. You can pick up something like this and you can boost the audio levels. Just a little bit annoying that the audio level is just that little, you know, it's just a little bit lower than it should be. I don't think it's a deal breaker for everyone. I really don't. But the problem is I've got is that in certain mic setups, when I've set up the mic to a certain level, I can't really, I can't really go anywhere else because I'm at 95, 100%. So I think it's loud enough for most people. I do think it's loud enough for most people. I just would have liked a little bit more headroom. And I think when you're spending, you know, like 250, 300 on a device like this, you know, the headphone preamp should have been a little bit better, but maybe other people's mileage will be a little bit different from mine, but, and again, it's maybe not fair to compare it to something like this, this is like three times the cost, but the Audion ID22 is about the same price, and the, the headphone amp in that is much, much better, much clearer, uh, so, yeah, but, um, is, you know, on, 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 um, on the subject of things I don't like, the app, now, I actually like the app, as far as the app is very useful to use. It's just, a, again, it's just a few little things that I don't like about it. Firstly being that you can't just install firmware for this. You have to install the app. There's no just install a driver and it works. You have to install this app. Now, the actual app I like, I do actually like this app. I think it's, you know, when you get used to how this works, it's very easy to use, very flexible, really, really good. But there's a few things I don't like. I don't like that when I start my computer, it just automatically loads. It just, boom, loads up and it's always shown at the start of, you know, my computer starting up. There's no way to to remove it from the startup menu. You can obviously go into Windows and you can dictate which apps load on startup, but there's nothing through the, conf you know, the configurations options. You can minimize this. When you're actually on it, you can click X and you can minimize it. That is an option. You can minimize it there and it'll go down to your tray. But when it actually loads up, it just loads right into your um, into your display and it dominates, you know, it's like the first thing it loads up, it dominates my window, uh, my my monitor, and it's like the, the biggest window that's displayed there and it's one of the first things that are loaded and I can't delay that. I, I would prefer an option to just load it up when I was using it. It's not an option. If that app is installed, that is loading. Again, you can go into Windows and you can tweak things and you can change what applications are loaded, but that's like, you know, that's like an important setting. For most applications I've got, there's a little tick that says start when Windows starts. I don't want that to always load up and it loads up full size. It's not just minimizing your tray. If it was minimizing your tray, it wouldn't be so bad. But yeah, it's one of those things. Another thing is that um, this just stays on all the time. There's no on off switch. Not a deal breaker per se. You know, I can control that from the wall adapter, but I think just because this is so colourful and so bright, it's a little bit annoying that there isn't just a little push a button to turn it off, turn it on. You have to take the power off for that to happen. If not, it'll just stay on. It'll stay powered. So, um, that's not a major problem for me, if I'm honest. But a lot of those things, it's just kind of minor things. Just minor things as far as um, the mic preamps are okay. They're, they are good, but they're not as good as something which has 10 decibels less gain. Um, and the mic preamp is just not loud enough for me. Um, just It's just little things like that. Overall, though, there are lots of things that I do like. There's a lot of things that I do like. The compressor works really well. So the, the way that the compressor works, um, if I can bring up, if I can bring up the, the window here, um, like that. Right. So the compressor, you can see here, it's set at 10. But um, there it's here, minus 5 decibels. And the ratio eight to one. That's the way I've got it set up, which basically means that over five, de when, you know, when you get to that minus five decibels level, if there's any spikes, if someone drops something, there's a loud bang, 
that will be compressed at a ratio of 8 to 1, which basically means that I won't peak. I'm not going to clip. I'm not going to clip. So I can shout as loud, of, loud as I want right now, and I won't clip. And that is really good. And in practice, I've found that to be one of the best features of this. It works really, really well. It works really well. Um, I'm very pleased with that. Uh, the noise gate works okay as well, but... You know, it, it's kind of telling when you when you put a lot of these set, settings down, this mic sounds awful, where through all my other audio interfaces it sounds so much better. It's only when you apply all these kind of effects that the mic starts sounding better again. But you can go into the settings, you can change the noise gate and you can change the DS or settings and all that. It's not too difficult. You do have to watch the tutorial to get a good understanding of it. But I do think as far as uh, the mic quality goes, the mic preamp, 70 decibels, I would have liked the, the default mic preamp to be a little bit better, but through the software, it corrects a lot of the, the issues that I had with it as far as, you know, the quality goes. So, yeah, I am happy with the audio quality and I am happy with the compressor. I think they've done a really good job with that. Um, the, the one thing they've done really well with as well is the faders. These faders, you know, I can mess about with them really easy and I can put my headphones up and down. Works really well. I think this is one of the best things about it because there's like nine or ten different inputs that you can set and you know you can see there's different ports at the, the bottom there but you can set the four most important things to the fader here and what that does is give you a lot more flexibility as to what you're doing so <clears throat> excuse me from a game streaming point of view you might have your microphone you might have um so i think i've put that mic level up there um you might have the microphone you might have the headphones you might have game audio, you might have chat from, you know, playing with your friends on the PlayStation, or perhaps you're doing a Skype video interview, you might have the level of the Skype call, or you might have the level of a call from someone who's calling you via your phone and you've just plugged the audio from your phone into the back and you can control the audio with the fader like that and you can get the audio to the perfect level. Now, that's really good. I think that's amazing that you can do that. The only thing I would I would really be um, careful about uh, is that you need to always save your profile, always. Now up here you've got an option to save your profile there. Now if you don't save your profile, then you'll get frustrated because what will happen is, say like right now I feel I'm too loud and I bring this down, I adjust this and I get my audio levels perfect during the stream and I go, oh that's too loud and I'll set it. When I go back in, it will default to my profile. So it will do this. It will, like that's changed to that profile. And now I'm changed to that profile. And I'm changed to that profile. Now, now I'm changed back to my original profile, but because I didn't save that there, I will lose the adjustments that I made. Now, and I realize that's by design. That is by, des by design. That's what you want a lot of the time. And that you want to go back to your optimal settings. But... If you forget to save the profile, if you're making any adjustments during the stream and you forget to do it, you need to go all the way back because if you change the colors or you change anything, like say I put it to sleep and then go back. So I put it to sleep there, it just minimizes everything there. Um, and that's just a, that's actually a profile setting, sleep, which they've added because they don't have an on off switch. Um, but if you do that and, and you sleep and then you go back, again, you lose any of the adjustments that you had. So you always, always have to save any adjustments that you have. It is Sometimes it is really good to have that, other times not. So just be just be conscious of that. I think the actual, like, the, the voice effects and, and all that, um... <laughs> all of these things are quite cool. You know, gender... Does that change me? Does that change me? Does it change me? Does it change my voice? Yeah. So, a lot of these things are cool, but I, I don't want to say they're gimmicky. I think for a lot of game streamers, this is exactly what they're looking for. They want to make their streams more fun, add funny voices, add samples, add deeps like that, add little d different things like that. The, the, the big pink button here will mute your mic, because it means that if you're talking to someone, I was muted there. Um, so if someone come in, I can, you can't hear me until I, I release the button. So there are things like that I really do like. I think they've implemented it really well. So I think that I don't want to put people off from buying this because I do like it. 
I do think it's good. Um, and I think that it's maybe unfair of me to compare the mic preamps with this, with the Audion ID22 that I've got. Yes, they are the same price, but that is a dedicated audio recorder. So not a surprise that the preamps in that are better. But um, I think with this, you're really looking at the overall package. I think that if you're a game streamer, if you're a game streamer and you're looking for an all-in-one device and it's just you and you're not interviewing other people, it's just you at your desk playing games, I can see why many people would buy this. The, the sampler and the, the effects and, and all this kind of thing, I think that for younger people, that will be amazing and they'll use it all the time. I think for older, maybe more boring people like myself, I think you'll use it a little bit at the start and then you'll get bored of it and you'll just not use it during your stream because it it gets a bit old very quickly. Which is maybe why they're coming out with the Go XLR Mini. They're coming out with a mini version of this where it's just the fader. It's just the four faders there. It's half the cost. It's smaller. It's an audio interface. And I can see why many people would opt for that instead. You don't have the, the, the mixer and, and the, the... You don't have the sampler. You don't have the, the vocal effects. But I think that a lot of people will maybe go for the Go XLR Mini because maybe they found that they don't use those things or they don't need them. Certainly for me, I think I would maybe get more use out of the Go XLR Mini than the full Buna, the full thing. Um, and before I bought this, I thought it would be the opposite. I thought I want all these extra effects. I want all these, you know, all these different things. Turns out I don't. Turns out they get old quite quickly, in my opinion. But the actual fader here, you know, these, the, the Go XLR Mini is just the four faders and you've still got the XLR input and you've still got the inputs. I think for most people, that will be really, really interesting. And I might revisit this and go back and buy the Go XLR Mini. That might be better for me. It's smaller, it's more compact. And the faders here and the, and the line inputs, those are really what, for me, separate the Go XLR from other solutions out there because it, it gives you a lot of different options as far as taking calls, as far as, you know, taking a call from someone, you can route it right through here without messing about with too many settings. You can adjust your game audio. You can adjust the audio from playing a video on Chrome or, or Firefox, whatever browser. You know, say you're watching a video on YouTube, you can adjust the audio just by, just by going up and down like that. Um, so I think the fader element for me is one of the best things about it. I think the compressor is excellent. The mic preamps could have been a little bit better. The headphone amp could have been a little bit better. But overall, the package is good. You know, I was kind of nitpicking a little bit earlier on. But I think that, you know, the, the whole thing is quite a big thing to have on your table. And um, I think that the Mini Go XLR might be what some people gravitate towards. One thing I've noted uh, is that when you're actually sitting here, you can actually, when you're setting the level at the top, you can actually see the levels. You need to kind of reach over. So they are actually bringing out a stand so that it brings you, you know, instead of lying like that, where you're reaching over and seeing what the level's like there, it brings it up like this so that you can see it. I think that will suit a lot of people as well. I think that makes it... Um, a little bit more practical as well because I'd like you know you can imagine putting this against the wall where you can just adjust things in the wall rather than reaching under something to change it um overall I do like the device it, it, it's just a mixed bag for me it's just a mixed bag the lack of an X uh, you know the lack of additional XLR inputs um is a little is a little bit frustrating if this had two or three or four XLR, XLR inputs at the back it might have even replaced my other my other uh, audio interface but because it only has one it's a little bit restrictive because it means that it can only record me. I can't record this and a boom, a boom mic. You know, it kind of limits what I can do. You can do some different things with the line in port and all that, but the the X, one XLR input is annoying. The mic preamps are good, not great. The headphone amp is okay, not great. But the effects and the sample and all that, amazing. But it's just not something I, I, I see myself using in the future. I thought I would use it more than I would. Um, but it's such a big, kind of heavy device that I, I don't see myself using all that. The fader, though, the, the fader for me is one of the best elements of this. Controlling your, your line inputs, giving you all these hardware faders rather than adjusting things on the computer. I think that is one of the coolest things about this. And it's why I think the Go XLR Mini might end up being more popular than this. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. And I hope I've not put anyone off this. I think this is a really good device. I just think that it's for a very specific, you know, um, group of people. And I think 
because I've got other audio interfaces, this is my fourth at the moment, and um, because I've got other audio interfaces, the mic preamps in this just aren't as good as the other two that I've got there. Um, they're better than this one, but they're just not as good as the other ones I've got, so it's not improving there. But the compressor is really good, the fader is really good, and there are things I like about it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Do your research before you buy this, look into what it can do and what it can't do, and be honest about whether you think you would use all these additional features such as changing my voice and a megaphone. Would you like to use effects like that in your game stream? If yes, then this is the device for you. This isn't the best audio interface in the world, it's not the best sampler in the world, it's not the best effects device in the world, but it does put a, a, together a nice little package. It's just flawed in some areas for me. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.